welcome to India's capital city of Delhi for semi-finals day at the Yonix Sunrise India Open. A Delhi, a vibrant metropolis where culture and tradition blend so effortlessly with the modern world and in sporting terms, India is a country where cricket has traditionally honked the headlines, but this week all attention and focus has turned to the badminton action here at the Siri Fort Sports Complex, as two of the home players have a chance to create history. Now, as you can see from the calendar, the Yonix Sunrise India Open, the second event on the 12 tournament MetLife BWF World Super Series. We had a complete change in the Super Series calendar this year. January and February were left free, giving the players a two months sabbatical at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year of course it's the super series finals and the destination this year as it was last year is dubai the super series finals from the 9th to the 13th of december this year and of course it's only the top eight players or pairs in each of the five disciplines who will qualify for the destination Dubai Super Series Finals and what a success it was. The first staging last year in Dubai, the players really enjoyed themselves and they're already talking about their desire to qualify once again for the destination Dubai Super Series Finals. Well, as I say, it is semi-finals day today. Never before has a home player reached the final of the Indian Open when it's been part of the Super Series. We're starting with a mixed doubles and the defending champions, Joachim Fischer-Nielsen and Christina Pedersen, up against Praveen Jordan and Debut Suzanto. Then women's singles in the Battle of the World Champions, the former world champion, the Vratchenok Intanon, up against the current world champion, Carolina Marin. Then men's doubles and Chai Biao and Hong Wei looking for a fifth Super Series tournament final. They're up against the European champions, Vladimir Ivanov and Ivan Sozanov. Uh, then the first of the home players, the women's singles, Saina Newell, the Olympic bronze medalist. She's up against the unseeded Yui Hashimoto of Japan. Then the last of our semi-finals, the qualifier from China, Shui Song, up against Shrikanth Kadambi, the number two seed, looking for his third final of the year. What a meteoric rise he's had through the world rankings to one of the world's leading players. So, of course, with two uh, Indian players contesting today's semi finals, it really is a tremendous lineup. But we're starting with mixed doubles, as I say, and this is the draw from the quarter final stage. And as you can see, we will be concentrating on the top half of uh, the draw. Incidentally, the third quarter there, two unseeded pairs the Singapore and the Indonesian pair. But uh, the number two seeds, the bronze medalists from the World Championships last year in Copenhagen, Liu Cheng and Bao Yi Sin. But as I say, we are starting with the mixed doubles from the top half of the draw. So it is the defending champions, Joachim Fischer Nielsen and Christina Pedersen. The number one seeds from Denmark up against Praveen Jordan and Debbie Suzanto. The number seven seeds from Indonesia. So let's go courtside and join our MC to introduce the players. Well, a year ago, this Danish combination were the number three seeds here at the India Open. And in the final, they had a tremendous match against the number four seeds, Go Sung Hyung and Kim Ha Na, winning the title in three thrilling games. Of course, this is such an interesting match, uh, both pairs. bronze medalists at the well, bronze medalists, semi-finalists I should say, at the recent All England Championships. Cornelia Schroeder, our umpire, her first duty, the toss of the coin. Now, did Christina Pearson 
say that she wanted to choose ends. She seemed to be pointing to the near side of the court as we look down. But there is uh, Debbie Suzanto, 25-year-old, born in Palembang in South Sumatra. And they're the oldest player on court. 36-year-old uh, Joachim Fisher Nielsen from Copenhagen. And his partner, 28-year-old Christina Peterson from Aalborg in North Jutland. They are the reigning European champions. Uh, they are the number one seeds and they have a current world ranking of number two. In fact, this is the 17th week in total that they have been world number twos. Defending champions making their third appearance here and they've had a good start to the year because uh, they've been in two finals, having won one of their finals already. They won the Malaysian Grand Prix gold event and then reached the final of the German Grand Prix gold as well. Semi-final of the All England, so this is their fourth tournament of the year. And looking at their matches so far, well, they've been uh, very convincing indeed. All of their matches in two straight games, including yesterday's quarter-final against Kenichi Hawakawa and Saki Matsutomo of Japan. So the Danes uh, look good in defence of their mixed doubles title here. Their opponents, are of course, the number seven seeds from Indonesia. There is uh, Debbie Susanto, 25 years of age. Her partner is just 21. He'll turn 22 uh, next month. He's from Pontang in Borneo. They are, as you can see, ranked 12 at the moment, and like their opponents, that's the highest they've ever been, and this is their 12th week in total. Now, this is only their second appearance as a pair because they only formed their partnership at the start of last year, and, uh, of course, they were quarter-finalists a year ago. So this year, well, they had a big win yesterday, I can tell you, because they had to defeat the number four seeds, uh, Lu Kai and Wang Yaxiong of China and of course uh, that Chinese pair were winners of the Swiss Grand Prix gold the event just prior to this Super Series tournament. So saved two game points in that opening game against the number four seeds from China before winning it 23-22, 22-12. So they like their opponents are playing well and like their opponents uh, uh, a third semi-final of the year now, of course, this is not the first time these two pairs are meeting each other because they met each other in the final of the first tournament uh, this year on the international calendar, which was the Malaysian Grand Prix gold event. And there you can see two straight games. It was the Danish pair who won on that occasion. In fact, they've won all four previous occasions. So this is the fifth meeting between these two pairs. And if you're... An Indonesian supporter, that statistic is probably a little ominous. But, as I say, with the Indonesians only just forming their partnership a little over a year ago, they are developing as a partnership all the time. So there is Cornelia Schroeder, our umpire. Umpires and service judges from all over the world. And neutrality ensured for play. all of these matches. Kulkani of India is our service judge, as you just saw. Well, we can see a little bit of strapping on the back of the neck there of Praveen Jordan. And the Indonesian coach. So it's always nerve-wracking time, isn't it, for coaches and players. Now, there we are. Now, obviously, a bit of a shoulder strain or maybe just didn't sleep so well and a bit of a stiffness in the neck there. Let's not hope it's nothing too serious. So 
So the player's just about ready. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Joachim Fischer Nielsen, Christina Pedersen, Denmark. Jordan, Debbie Susanto, Indonesia. <laughs> Debbie to San Susanto to serve to Joachim Fischer Nielsen. Lavo, play. So the first of our semi finals gets underway. The defending champions from Denmark nearest to us are up against the number seven seeds from Indonesia. Ooh, that's a bit loose. Oh. Yeah, I thought what it deserved. What on earth was he thinking? One love. Well, certainly if you're a follower of badminton, you'll understand the tactical awareness that's needed for the mixed doubles discipline. Oh, let me look down towards the line from Joachim Fischer yep. and of course those standard tactics as it is for all doubles events is to try and get on the attack try and get the shuttle going in a downward direction and of course it's a biological fact that men tend to be stronger physically than women so you really want the man at the back of the court thundering down the smashes and women tend to be more flexible and more agile than men and therefore you want them at the front of the court where you have to really twist and turn and react very, very quickly to try and make the interceptions there. So in very basic terms, the tactics we will see with both the female players on court trying to get forward to the net as much as possible and dominate that front court area. If you can do that, then you tend to force your opponents to lift the shuttle and then you're in that attacking formation. And wide. Good flick serve. Oh, the luck of the net cord for which she immediately apologises. Olympic bronze medalist, twice world championship bronze medalist, this Danish combination. is fairly intimidating serving to Joachim Fischer. He's a tall man, 189, that's six foot two and a half. Oh, what a return. Yeah, very interesting as the shuttle is lifted short. Five. Christina Three. Peterson absolutely moving her base position. Look, she comes out as if to say to her partner, hit the smash, follow forward. That's great understanding between the two players. Oh. Oh. 
Kicked us wide. Now we have got the instant review Stand system over. in operation Four, here this week. Five. Two challenges allowed per match. Unless, of course, you get a challenge correct and you keep that challenge. So it's very similar to tennis. defense my goodness me well I've been critical in the past of Peterson's defensive play that was a moment of magic superb look at it not just getting it back but getting it back with interest and look how she's moved forward as well again he's got a big powerful smash as Praveen Jordan Three-point cushion. Up until now, never more than two points between the two pairs. Oh. Oh, that's nice. That's over. Nice net shot from Six. Jordan. Eight. Look how he reached out. Oh, he played it accurately too. Nicely done. <laughs> well, that was very, very good under pressure from Debbie Susanto. Of course, Debbie Susanto had a very good partnership for many okay, years I, I with Mohamed Rajal. In fact, they reached number Red six three. in the world ranking. Ooh. Now, what's going on here? Referee is called. Oh, our, um, There's some taking photographs with flashlights. Yeah? That side. Yeah. That is excellent that we could hear what she was saying and what the problem was. <laughs> now we know Seven, what the issues eight. are. just thought to myself what a great shot from Debbie Susanto Nine, she's just put seven. enough power on it to get it past Joachim Fischer but he played that interception from behind him and played a winner super badminton close and I think there was a thought process Eight, of should we challenge nine. that with only two challenges yeah, difficult to tell perhaps 
saving challenges for a more crucial stage of the match. Oh, he's done it again. Already, a couple of times blocking the shuttle across court from the left hander, and Debbie Suzanto is onto it very quickly. Excellent. to either of these women on court. They're both superb front court players. So it is the defending champions who have the narrowest of possible margins. At the mid-game interval, just one point in it. <laughs> Eleven minutes in play to the mid-game interval. Now, where's the Danish coach? Jesper Larsen. I was having a good old chat to Jesper earlier today in the hotel where we were staying. I said, I didn't see you yesterday. Board I saw one, that Jorkin Fischer was doing one, some coaching after he played his mixed doubles match. He assured me that he was here. Round and about. I, mean, I don't see him courtside now on the adjoining court in the other semi-final. Is there no, no Danish Eight. players there? Perhaps he's got Danish players that he's talking to at the moment off the court somewhere. athletic leap in the air trying to take all pace out of the shot and play the drop shot in fact looking down towards that line trying to work out whether maybe he should have left it would it have gone wide well we'll never know well once again there's flashlight right behind the court while Peterson is trying to serve and it is very very distracting problem is with all these modern cameras and camera phones and so on it's all out automatic flashlight if it I don't remember to switch it off well, my day you had to remember to switch the flashlight on hmm, giving away my age Just wide. 
very clever the way all four players are trying to exploit the mid-court area. Trying to get it past the net player, but making the shuttle land in front of the rear court player. So it's not a defensive shot, it's very much an attacking shot. So it's played quite softly into those mid-court areas, but it is very, very effective. Oh, brilliant. Great play from Peterson. She celebrates, yeah, even a, a point of congratulation from her partner there. I don't know why I say even, they're very supportive of each other. Yeah. Applying the pressure at the crucial stage of this opening game. Turn. Yeah. That one much flatter. Push straight 60. into the chest of Fisher Nelson. Instead of hitting upwards Seven across in court in towards 13. the net, he was hitting downwards. This one here. Look at that. That's lovely. And then he goes cross court from his forehand side. So really switching the direction of his attacking shots. Making opponents twist and turn. I was telling you that Debbie Susanto had a very good mixed doubles partnership with Mohamed Rajal. Praveen Jordan spent a little over a year playing with Vita Marissa, who is a very experienced Indonesian player, and she taught him an awful lot about the tactics of mixed doubles, and I, I do like the way that they've used an older player to bring on this youngster, because Praveen Jordan at only 21 years of age. He is a huge talent for the future. You can see he's a physically strong athlete. And when he gets his tactics and that real understanding of the mixed doubles discipline, well, I think he's already world class, but I think he's going to start winning some of the majors. Flashlights. going wide. Well, I suspect that might be the longest rally of the match so far. Yeah, both pairs keeping it tight. Oh, only 21 shots thought it was longer than that, but I suspect it probably is the longest rally of the match so far. Oh, that's a nice smash. Yeah. 
keeping it straight. Gone are the days where men feel the necessity to smash on the women. The women's defences now are just as strong as the men. And therefore, the placement is everything. And placement and angle there. And that 340 kilometres an hour, that winning smash from Joachim Fischer. That's 211 miles per hour. Oh, that's a shocking serve. Dear, dear me. Not what it deserved. It was a nice side. I like the thought process of trying to go out wide, but it was just far, far too loose. across the shuttle that is exquisite what a way to bring up game point opportunities hey. and first time of asking the defending champions and number one seeds Joachim Fischer Nielsen Christina Pedersen 21-16 21-16 in 21 minutes and the opening game to the defending champions from Denmark, Joachim Fischer Nielsen and Christina Pedersen. Mm, the Indonesian coach, I think, saying something about pushing deep into the back corners of Joachim Fischer. And if he is saying that, I would wholeheartedly agree. He's so good coming forward to the midcourt area that if you can get the shuttle deep into the back corners and move him from side to side at the back, and I can assure you that's easier said than done. Putting that into practice is all very well in theory, but putting that into practice is quite difficult. Absolutely fascinated by the fact that the Danish coach Jesper Larsen Second wasn't game. courtside, Level. and I can only assume Play. that perhaps this Danish mixed doubles pair are now competing as independent players rather than being funded by the Danish Badminton Federation. I need to check that out, or maybe they just don't want any coaching. Maybe they're prefer to be left to their own devices. One but certainly the Indonesian coach was present. And I thought he was probably, or possibly, instructing his players to try and move Walk and Fisher from side to side at the back of the court. Yeah, it's well taken. Yeah, it's a shoulder problem. You can One see that strapping just appearing from below his shirt sleeve as well. It goes up to his neck. It's going wide. Out. Yeah, I thought it was going to hit for a moment. One. 
Yeah, it was a nice idea, though, from Debbie Susanto. With a block shot and moving forward. Yeah, there's the flashlight still going off. arena attendants to just keep an eye. I'd really like to see Rabin Jordan doing a little more to involve Debbie Susanto at the back at the front of the court. I think he's got to be more thoughtful about his placements of shots. So that she's got a possibility of intercepting. Yeah, he seems to be just losing his way. Looked very disappointed after that rally. Body language. Yeah, it's only early stages of the second game, and I've seen Praveen Jordan play some sensational badminton. So he needs to try and lift his spirits here. Oh, that's a good kick save. Much, much better smash from Praveen Jordan. The channel attack in between the two Danish players. Now, if that had come back, it would have been in the hitting zone of Debbie Susanto. <laughs> He's always very expressive on court. I do enjoy watching him play. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, no wonder he's frustrated with that. Tosses his racket in the air. Oh, this is catching it. Well, the umpire's going to... Always trying to warn Praveen Jordan. Well, there's nothing malicious about that. That was just sheer frustration. Wide. Oh, there's going to be a challenge here. Christina Perezen, oh, I agree with the line judge. Challenge. Called out. No, oh, difficult to tell. Mm. Yeah, line judge was right and like yesterday I've got one right as well
challenge remaining. So that's quite fair, just one challenge remaining. He's a tough man. Don't let that bother him. Just a bit of pride that's been hurt, I think. Oh, it was a great return of serve. Not that the serve was that good. And it's a shot like that from Praveen Jordan that could just lift the spirits and give him some belief back. Look, he's under pressure, behind the back, plays the perfect Five, defensive nine. shot. Fabulous. A moment of inspiration. play what a rally round the back shots has indeed lifted the Indonesians all of a sudden it's believable that they can catch back up just two points in it smash and better defense oh what a pity what 
It's a pity that such a good rally ended with really a pretty poor, unforced error. Did he change his mind? He lets the shuttle come to him. He's taking it low. You can't possibly play back to the net in mixed doubles from that position. So, mid-game interval. Four points the advantage. Umpire's going to have a look. Yep, very clear. Good to hear what the umpire is saying. Her score pad no. is correct, uh, but the scoreboards at the back of the court are not correct. Late. So she's relying on her score pad. 11 7. Yep, we're correct. Players are correct, umpires correct. Oh. Oh, I'm going for a very ambitious shot there, York and Fisher. Pedersen to her partner to leave it and it was a wise decision Fisher has missed now coming forward. Nine, oh, some great reactions from that rally from both the female players on court. going out surely oh that's nice and that with the Indonesians is exposing the fact that they don't quite yet have that complete understanding who's going for which shot I have to say it's a very good shot by the Danes Probably would have beaten any player in the world in all honesty. Oh, it's 
just long. Well, that, I'm certain, is the sort of shot that the Indonesian coach has been talking about at the intervals. He's challenging. It was called out, and I think the line judge got it right to challenge a call on the back line, the opposite end to where you are. It was perhaps a little bit risky. The time is running out. You might as well have some. Yeah, it was out. but he was alert to it this time and played a superb backhand. Struck above the waist, says our service judge. signal to me was quite clear above the waist and the reason we have some hand signals from the service judge is because if there's any language barrier then the players know immediately without it having to be verbalized Susanto trying to take the captain's role and trying to encourage her younger partner because yeah, he has gone a little flat. And there goes Rowan with the back line. And now just three points away from the final once again for the defending champions. Deepness. And match points have arrived. Nine opportunities for the Danes to book their place in the final once more.
Uh, perhaps too little too late. Good serve. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly what I've seen him do in the past. Beautiful serving like that. Get behind the shuttle, play the winning smash using his power. But we just haven't seen enough of that in this semi-final from the young man from Indonesia. This time, and the Danes celebrate two-game victory over the Indonesians, the number seven seeds, but the number one seeds, the defending champions from Denmark, Joachim Fischer Nielsen and Christina Peterson. She'll be on court later today in the women's doubles, uh, but job done in the mixed doubles. This the final 21, rally. 16, 21, 14. Thank you. The moment of victory. Two straight games, as I say. 47 minutes for 21 16. 21 14. And the defending champions have a chance tomorrow to retain their title. Ravine Jordan, there's no question about his potential. He needs to really get his mental game together because that's where the Danes are so good. Mentally strong, keep supporting each other. So they take leave of centre court, but it really was a very fine mixed doubles semi final.
So the first of our semi-finals uh, completed, and as you can see, the Danes off to uh, the perfect start in defence of their title. Next up is women's singles in the Battle of the World Champions, the former world champion against the current world champion. Then men's doubles, of course, with the European champions against the Chinese pair of Chai Biao and Hong Wei. And then uh, the second of the women's singles, and we end with men's singles. The last two semi-finals, of course, involving home players. But with the women's singles uh, coming up uh, next, our first uh, women's singles semi-final will be from the bottom half of the draw. Now, just look at that from quarter-final stage. Seven different nations, two Japanese uh, players, but seven different nations, four different nations represented at semi-final stage. Now, just a year ago, people were telling me that women's singles was dominated by one country. How it's all changed. That really is a very healthy situation.